Welcome to another episode at the Fitness Oracle. I am your host, John Katsapos, and today we sit down with Nikki Ballou from East Circle Academy. Nikki is the number one best-selling author of the, of the book, Finish Line Thinking, How to Think and Win Like a Champion, The Thought Leader's Journey, A Fable of Life, and The Power of Connecting, How to Activate Profitable Relationships by Serving Your Network. He is an in-demand and highly inspirational speaker to corporate audiences such as RBC, Lululemon, Royal LePage, and Tour Star Media. He is an advisor and confidant to some of the most successful and dynamic entrepreneurs in Canada. He is the co-founder of eCircle Academy, where he runs a year-long mastermind and educational program working with coaches, consultants, corporate trainers, clinic owners, realtors, mortgage brokers, and other service-based entrepreneurs, positioning them as authorities in their niche. He is also the creator of the Thought Leader, Heart Leader Destination. As the host of the number one podcast in the world in thought leadership, The Thought Leader's Revolution, Nikki has over has interviewed over 300 of the world's top thought leaders. In this episode, we talk about obviously thought leadership, his speciality, messaging, heart-driven business, mentorship, and overcoming adversity. Again, this episode is loaded with a ton of knowledge and a ton of value for all of you wonderful listeners and watchers out there. Um, if you are a podcaster and you are struggling to find balance in your business with your health and wellness, Resilient Reboot Productions is here to help. Our community of expert podcasters provides you with the tools, resources, and support you need to build a thriving podcasting business while pr prioritizing your well being. We know that success is about more than just hard work. It's also about resilience, balance, and connection. Join us now and discover how to create a sustainable, fulfilling career in podcasting that lets you live your best life. Don't let burnout stand in the way of your dreams. Join Resilient Reboot Productions today. Nikki, welcome to the show. John, it's an honor to be here. Thanks for having me on, bro. It's an honor to have you on here. It's always good to have a fellow brother from uh, back home, from Toronto, on the show, and uh, doing similar work that I'm trying to get uh, get as well. So, how is the big uh, how is the big smoke? I'm about to uh, make the my way back. The big smoke is there. raining, man. Raining hard today, bro. <laughs> I'm not, and I got I an outdoor that. event tonight, so I'm hoping the rain's going to dissipate somewhat. <laughs> well, I'm praying for you. I'm praying. I'm praying for the rain to stop so you can have your outdoor event. Oh, we're having it regardless. I just That's don't want to get soaked. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, I asked this about all my guests at the beginning of the show just to get a concept of you know why you're doing this. So, what what first got you interested in this line of work? Well, look, um, maybe the best way to answer that question is to tell you a little bit about my backstory. Okay. So I'm actually originally an immigrant from the Middle East. I'm a Christian from Iran. When I was 11 years old, the Islamic Revolution took place in Iran. And my late father, God rest his soul, he could see the writing on the wall that this was not going to be an ideal place to raise his Christian family. So what he did is he made a plan and he got us out of Iran and, he, and we went to Greece first, John, you'll like that, right? We lived in Athens for two years in an area of Athens called Polargos. We went to an American school in Kifisia, you, you know, Hellenic International School it was called. And then Tassis took it over, the American school in Switzerland took it over. Um, there was Tassis, Greece, that, that's what happened. And 
I was I was a student there for two years. There were two amazing years, and then we came to Canada. And um, I can tell you this: I thank God every day for my late father and his foresight, because he took us out of um, uh, tyranny and brought us into freedom. I have lived uh, virtually my uh, entire adult life in in a free society. Now, is it perfect? No, but. I'm very grateful to be here. And I know it's very fashionable among some circles to go Canada, the US, they're so oppressive and racist and sexist. And I just look at people who say that and I go, these people are either ignorant or they're male malevolent because they're trying to like gaslight us into seeing, thinking something isn't true. This is the freest, most amazing society that ever was. And we're lucky all to be here and to live in freedom. I believe in freedom, free expression, free enterprise. And my father also believes believed in those things. God rest his soul. And um, he was the greatest man I ever knew, John. Like, uh, if you um, if you knew him, you would see that he was an uplifter. If you were looking for work, he'd help you find a job. If you were trying to start a business, he'd help you start a business. Even if you were going to compete with him, he didn't care about that. He just wanted to help people. And if you worked for him and you tried to buy a car, a house, or an apartment, and you didn't have enough money, he would top you up, make sure you could buy that car, that house, that apartment. And it's like, you might be thinking, that's awesome, like, who does that, right? And I'll tell you, the late, great Napoleon Ballou, for one, but a lot of a lot of business owners in Iran were like that, lots. Like, I'm telling you, there was a, there's, a, there's a culture that used to exist in Iran. Don't know that it's that way now, but it used to, and it was, it was pretty amazing. Um, and um, why would he do that? Well, first of all, he was a Christian. He believed that it was his duty and obligation to share the blessings he'd been given by God with others. Secondly, he did it because he could. He had the financial wherewithal. He had the money. John, you know what I'm trying to say? He had the money, right? And there'd be people right now who, who would like listen to this and go, that sounds like an amazing man. And yeah, he was an amazing man. And I was very blessed to be his son. I wanted to be just like him. Like I, I, I worship my dad, you know? And so when I grew up, I eventually became an entrepreneur, you know, just like dad. And I, I was all about, I want to help people. And I got into a profession where I help people. Like I got into health and fitness coaching and then business coaching. And then I'm, you know, running seminars and workshops and, and events. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, I see entrepreneurs as society's greatest heroes. You know, everything good in the world comes because of an entrepreneur, because you have a dream and you're going after it. And, you know, I wanted to help make that happen for entrepreneurs. Like I got a vision of billion millionaires. It, we're going to create a strong foundation for free enterprise with a billion millionaires. And I, I, I do my part, you know, um, they call me the millionaire maker. I've helped about 80 plus people add anywhere from six to eight figures to their business. And, um, what I noticed in doing that was one of the key issues a lot of entrepreneurs had that were newer to business is they weren't really good business people. They didn't understand how to run a business. They, they had a great idea. They were good at doing something, right? They were good tradesmen, but they weren't good business owners. So what I wanted to do was show them how to learn the skills of business, like learn how to sell, learn how to market, learn you know how to manage clients and customers learn how to do finances and where i was where i was really good at was helping them sell and market right and what i noticed is a lot of people in business they just didn't know how to how to sell and market effectively like they didn't want to come across like they were pushy or salesy you know what i mean that was like a big deal for so many people still is no no i don't want to come across like i got commission breath <laughs> <laughs> yeah right so so I, I saw this and I, you know, I put programs together, help people with all this stuff. But I realized that what's missing here was a mindset, because as long as they looked at sales in that way, they weren't going to be successful making sales. You know what I'm saying, John? So yeah. what I started to do was I started to go, how can I help them shift their mindset? And I look at sales as an act of deep love and reverence, Right. But a lot of people, that word throws them off. So I, 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 I transform sales to service. Right? Well, and I started to tell people, let's look at it as service. 
Well, nobody wants to be sold. You don't want to be sold. I don't want to be sold. Yeah. But you love to buy, right? I'm looking behind you. You got some stuff there, right? Well, you love to buy. I bet that's... you, you love, you love going somewhere and putting down that money and getting something you want or buying a service. But you want to be served. You don't want some pushy jerk off coming and trying to tell you what to do. Yeah. But if you're served, you're feeling good, man, about it. You know what I mean? And so I teach people how to come from service. That way, it doesn't bother them to have those conversations. And they double, triple, quadruple it. That mindset shift. I can tell you now, okay, call it service. But most people are going to say, yeah, it's a great idea. And they're not going to do it because they don't know how, right? That's something that's got to be taught. And that's you know part of what we do for people. But that's, you know, in, in a nutshell, I believe in the entrepreneur and the majesty and the beauty of the entrepreneur. I want to see every entrepreneur win. The world becomes a better place when entrepreneurs make money. And if you're listening to this, I want you to make money. I want you to be a millionaire. You deserve it because you got the courage and the guts to go out there. And it's not your fault right now that you're not there. You just, you know, you just need to learn a few things and you need some help. And that's why I do what I do to help people like you become millionaires and multimillionaires and even billionaires. You have brought up so many freaking talking points. It's not even funny. <laughs> but um, stepping it back just a little bit, and I'm not trying to make this as a political platform podcast. This is not a political, but I'm I'm just curious to get your take on it with 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 the current events that's going on in Iran today, with this new um, I'd like to call it this new revolution. Do you think Iran is going to start taking different steps to? change well you know the mullahs uh won't they are going to try to cling to power they're killing people and they don't care but um stay tuned you know god is good and it may be that right now god is trying to help the world overcome tyranny and we pray for uh the brave lionesses of iran the men and women that are in prison, there are 15,000 of them that have been arrested and the regime is threatening to execute all of them. Imagine executing 15,000 people. And they, um, they, uh, they're they crazy. Uh, those I, those folks, and they're evil, unfortunately. They, they call themselves men of God, but they're not men of God. Men of God would not be doing things like this. No, I don't know. Men of power. Um, and, um, y- y- you know, it's happening in other parts of the world too. I mean, in China right now, the uh, communist government has imposed zero COVID policies and extreme lockdowns and quarantining. And um, there's been massive pushback against that by the Chinese people. Now, the Chinese leader, Xi, Xi Jinping, has sent tanks to crush those protests, tanks against unarmed civilians. Um, but like I said, God is good and you you, you never know what could happen, what could no. be opened up there. Um, Amen so to that. It, it's, it's, my, it's my belief that uh, the world needs to be a freedom loving world, a freedom minded world. That's what it what it should be, every day, all day, all the all the, all the time. And you know, you, you're in the great free state of Florida, the oasis of freedom, run by, you know, who, in my opinion, is the greatest political leader of our times, Governor Ron DeSantis, who's just a champion for freedom. And obviously, what he did was was appreciated by the people of florida because the last time he ran for office he barely won he won we won by like a couple tenths of a percent or something like that Mm -hmm. like thirty thousand votes and now he won by over a million and a half so he must have been doing something right oh he's doing a lot of stuff right um he's doing a lot of uh, um it, it hurts me to leave florida but i there's other circumstances that i have to come back to Canada, but it is what it is. It is um, what it is, man. You got to do you just, what you got to do. Yeah. You got to yeah. do what you got to do. You just got to, you know, tuck your tail between your legs and just keep moving forward. Um, you talked a little bit about entrepreneurship and I wanted to ask you, there's a lot of guys out there, a lot of, not just guys, but women, out, a lot of people out there that um, they have the drive but they don't have the means and they don't have the knowledge to pursue what it really, really truly means to be an entrepreneur and just being stuck in a comfortable job is just nice to them. What would you say to somebody like that? And what would you say to somebody like that to um, try to experiment with that form of, that, that form of 
entrepreneurship kind of line of thinking? This book was written to address all those questions. And for those... Thought Leader's Journey, A Fable of Life. It's available on Amazon. Okay. Um, and I'll walk you through a few of the things we say inside this book. So mm -hmm. number one is um, you got to... You got to make a decision. This is the number one quality of a successful person is they're decisive. Okay. Um, you have to face a hard truth that what you think is comfortable is really just a death sentence to your dreams. It's a death sentence to your dreams. Okay. Now, why is decisiveness an important quality for successful men and women? Well, let me explain that to you by telling you a story. Napoleon Hill is the author of the best-selling personal development book of all time, Think and Grow Rich. I'm sure you know what that book is. I'm sure you've heard of that book or read that book or whatever the case may be, John. And I'm sure that a majority of people listening to this episode have heard of Think and Grow Rich and Napoleon Hill. What you may not be aware of, as far as Napoleon Hill's story is concerned, is his backstory. When he was a young man, he was a journalist, okay? And um, he worked for a newspaper. And his newspaper editor sent him to interview someone to do a story on this individual. Now, this individual happened to be Andrew Carnegie then the richest man in the world. Young man, Napoleon Hill, goes to the estate of the richest man in the world. Times were, you know, a little more idyllic then. Things didn't move as fast. So he had three hours to interview the great man. Three hours, think about that. And um, at the end of the interview, Mr. Carnegie had taken a shine to young Mr. Hill and said, Mr. Hill, I very much enjoyed our time together. How would you like to spend the weekend with me at my estate? Now, John, I don't know about you, but if it were me and the richest man in the world today, which is Elon Musk, said, Mr. Ballou, how would you like to spend the weekend at my estate? I know he doesn't own an estate and I know he sold all his property, but how would you like to spend the weekend with me, hanging out with me? I know what my answer would be, that unless it was something to do with my children, I'm canceling everything else. I'm going to hang out with Elon Musk. You know what I'm saying? 100%. That's exactly what Napoleon Hill did, right? Straight up. Straight up. That's what will happen. So anyways, shortly after that took place, you know, uh, that yes, the two men just were engrossed in conversation. And it was just fantastic. They were talking about his philosophy of success and all of that. And as their time together was drawn to a close, Andrew Carnegie said, Mr. Hill, I have a proposition for you. How would you like to spend the next 20 years of your life researching my philosophy of success and writing it out in a book? I will assist you. I will not pay you a stipend. But what I will do is I will assist you by giving you my beliefs on it. And I will also write letters of recommendation to the 500 most successful men and women in these here United States. Now, there's Napoleon Hill in his 20s. There's Andrew Carnegie in his 60s, 70s at the time. And he just gave him an unbelievable, life-changing, bold proposition. It took him 31 seconds to say yes. The rest is, as they say, history. Napoleon Hill went and interviewed those 500 most successful men and women in the United States. He spent a good long time doing that, and he wrote a number of books, the most famous of which was pu published in 1938, Think and Grow Rich, which has conservatively sold 75, 100 million copies, yeah. right? And has revolutionized people's understanding of success. You follow what I'm trying to say over here, brother? 100%. Um, so many years later, 
Napoleon Hill came back to meet with the great man one last time before he passed. By this time, he had become a success and his books had done well. And the two were reminiscing. But then Mr. Carnegie looked at him and said, Mr. Hill, you didn't know this, but at the time I had my watch under the table. And my watch has a second hand on it, he said. I guess back then not all watches did. And he said, I had given you 60 seconds to make up your mind. And if you had not, I was going to withdraw my offer. <laughs> and he was like, oh, thank God I had answered within 60 seconds. But he said, but why, Mr. Carnegie? And he said, ah, that's a question you ought to be, answer your, uh, be able to answer yourself. Because you, sir, know my philosophy of success. So what is the answer? Why would I do that? And he said, uh, and he goes, it's because successful people decide quickly, don't they? And he said, yes. He said, myself and all the most successful people I know very quickly gather the facts and make a decision. As soon as we've gathered all the facts, we do not hem, we do not haul, we do not say, I'll get back to you. All we do is we say, yes or no. And he said, I'd ask four of the most eminent educators in these United States to do what I asked you to do before I asked you. They all said, I'll get back to you. Some of them never did. And some of them got back to me weeks and months later with a no. And he said, that's how I knew they were the wrong people and they'd never become successful. Mm -hmm. You think about that. It almost Are you decisive? Are you ready to say, I'm ready to do this rather than stay in that comfortable hell that you're in? That's the first quality you've got to have. That's a hard truth. It's a hard decision, right? And you've got to commit. It doesn't matter that you may have doubts. You've got to commit. You can't be one of these people who goes, I'm going to give it a try. What is that word? Try. Do or do not. There is no try. That's from Yoda and the Empire Strikes Back. You follow what I'm saying? 100%. And brother, then you got to be coachable. You've got to have mentors and coaches and peer groups. You know what I'm saying? And that's a fact. And then you got to be resourceful. It's going to cost you money to work with those coaches, mentors, and peer groups. It's going to cost you money to get your business going. It's going to cost you time and energy. Are you resourceful? Now, I'll tell you another story around resourceful. It's a story about me, Nikki B. So 13 or so years ago, my then wife, seemingly out of the blue, decided she didn't want to be married to me anymore. I was blindsided maybe i shouldn't have been but i was i went into a spiral my business started to tank and for a while i was sleeping on my mother's couch grown-ass man with two sons not a good look right here's what happened i went to a business event a conference a man delivered a talk this talk resonated with me hit me right here it inspired me it galvanized me to go approach him when the talk was over and to introduce myself even though i was nervous told him my story and then i kind of tentatively said i think i should hire you he looks at me and he goes hmm okay you should know, Mr. Ballou, that my minimum fee is $5,000. You don't want to know what my maximum fee is because you could add a zero plus to that. Like, all right. That's for just five hours of my coaching. And um, I get paid upfront 
I offer no guarantees and no refunds. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That just scared me to hear those words. You know what I mean? I was like, I was like shaking like a leaf inside. But I, 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 I don't have that kind of money. He says, I know. He says, I could tell. He says, I'm going to give you some free coaching. Okay. I'm going to give you, yeah, free coaching. Bring it, bring it, free coaching. Love it. And he said, it really doesn't matter how much money you have. What matters is how bad do you want change? And I'm like, what? I thought matter was how much money I had because he just told me I need five thousand dollars to work with you. He said no. He said right now your life is spiraling out of control. Like he was blunt. You haven't made money in months. You're sleeping on your mother's couch. You don't respect yourself and your business is not working. How much longer are you willing to tolerate this? And I just don't know. I hated him in that moment, bro. I hated him. <laughs> I wanted to like hit him, but he was right. And so he looks at me and he said, it's not the level of resources you have. It's how resourceful you can become. If you want this change bad enough, you will become resourceful. And I said, okay, give me a couple of days. I'm at an appointment to see him in two days. At the time, I was a personal fitness trainer and coach. And I had been in conversations with a number of folks about working together. Nothing had transpired. They hadn't said yes or no. So I was filled with urgency and purpose, John. And I walked up to, um, to my phone. I didn't have a cell phone back then, <laughs> believe it or not. I didn't get my cell phone. Uh, um, yeah, till like a few months after that because I didn't have enough money for a cell phone. So I picked up my phone and I made a couple of calls. And here's kind of the gist of the conversation that I call him and say, hey, it's Nikki, I got really good news for you. You're fat and you need to lose weight and I'm broke and I need money. So I'm going <laughs> to give you the deal of the century. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to give you half price. But here's the catch. You got to say yes now and you got to pay me now. So what's it going to be? And two of the guys I called said, okay, here's a thousand bucks. $2,000 half price. So, so I was excited. I had my meeting with this fellow. I walked up to him and I plopped down $2,000 on you know, the form of a check. Here you go, 2,000 bucks. And he said, um, uh, I said five. I'm like, oh my God. And I just looked at him and I said, uh, Bill, his name was Bill. I said, Bill, how many times have you given this little speech that you gave me a couple of days ago? And he looked at me, he says, over the years, maybe 30 or 40 times. I said, okay, okay. Now, besides me, who else came back to you with any money? And he said, that's easy. You're the first. Nobody else. So I said, okay, listen. You can see I'm serious. Take my money. I'll sign a contract. And I'll commit to paying the rest off in 30, 60 days, whatever the case might be. And the rest is history. Within six months, I'd made over $100,000. I paid them off early. One day early, but early. <laughs> and... Um, I never look back. And this is what I say, you know, these four qualities of success, decisiveness, commitment, coachability, and resourcefulness. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie John Wick with Keanu yeah. Reeves. Love that movie. It is one of the greatest movies of all time, especially the first one, right? The other two were good, but the first one was... Now... The um, the Russian mobster, when he finds out his son had insulted John Wick, beat him, and taken killed his dog and stolen his car, mm -hmm. told his son, 
you don't understand. John Wick is a man of focus, commitment, and sheer will. If you want to be an entrepreneur and be successful, you need to adopt the context of John motherfucking Wick. You need to be a man or woman of focus, commitment, and sheer will. That will allow you to win. Anything else is a recipe for disaster. We're going to get Are in. you ready to be a man or woman of destiny? Or are you clear that you're okay with being doomed to defeat? We're going to be getting over because that is such a huge topic right there. Right there, what you just said is a massive topic, and we can get into a, a three more episodes with just that. Sure. <laughs> But what I want to talk, what I want to talk about now is you actually mentioned something that I want to touch up on, which is uh, mentorship and the importance of having having people around you that have been through what you're a about to go through and b what you're going through right now. How important is it to find a mentor, a coach, someone to guide you through a process that nobody else in your small little circle knows about? It's everything, brother. It's everything. If you try to figure things out on your own, it's painful. It's painful. Like, you know, one of the things we tell clients when they do our, our workshop is we help you make a decade's worth of business progress in a day or two. Because if you're a committed enough person, you'll eventually figure it out. But why would you want to go through that hell? Why would you not want to shortcut the process? Like, John, I got a mentor when I was going through my um, marriage breaking up. I joined a men's group. I hired a, 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 a mentor, a coach who worked with me on me because I'd never gone through a marriage breakup before. This individual had and it helped hundreds of men emerge on the other side victorious and being in a men's group i had an opportunity to be with other men men only heal their wounds with other men this is a mistake some men make as they break up with their wife or their wife breaks up with them and they immediately run into the arms of another woman thinking she's going to heal them no she's going to love you maybe she's going to maybe have sex with you you're going to feel better but your healing comes from other men you know, and in business, your success is based on you being able to absorb the correct information so you don't make mistakes. You have to hire the right mentors. You know, one of my clients was Robin Sharma. It's actually from Toronto, the author of The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari, right? I used to train him at quarter to five in the morning. That's crazy. You wanted to get up really early. And so um, I would listen to him because this man had made money and he had helped a lot of people make money. And I would say to him, so Robin, how can I double my income this year? And you know what he said to me, John? He said to me, Nikki, um, you can double your income if you triple your investment in yourself, in your own personal and professional development. Hmm. John, that hit me. I did that and I over doubled my income. If you want to win, you've got to hire the mentors and the coaches. And yes, they are distinct, they're not the same thing. Okay. <laughs> You've got to become part of the peer groups. You've got to attend the conferences. You've got to do the courses. It's very important that you do all of that. As guys, we don't like doing that. 
I'll be honest with you. I'm talking from one guy to another. We do not like that. We are we, this, that. we are the lone wolf. And that's how society has not just labeled us, but identified us. How do we break that label for us? Well, brother, um, by the way, I just put something in the chat. When this con conversation's over, I'd like you to watch that video. Right, I we'll put do. this video together. I think for you, I think you need to watch this video, okay? It's 39 minutes long. Can you commit to me to watch it in the next couple of days? Absolutely. 100%. I appreciate it. So look, as men, what we need to do is be with other men. You got to be a part of men's groups, men's organizations. You got to have friends. You got to develop those friendships and, and you got to like be the kind of man who shows up up and hard, we call it. You know what I mean? Up and hard. Not down and flaccid, bro. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that is how a man can win is if he has other men around him who are going to sharpen him and hold him accountable. Like a lot of men's groups today are just a bunch of guys going, okay, we got a men's group. It's so great. But that's not what a men's group's for. A men's group is for pushing you out of your comfort zone. It's to make you better. Like if you come to a group and all the conversations are light, that's worthless. You got to come to a group and you got to be willing to like do the work. So tomorrow night, we're doing a work about building tribes and community. This is the book of the month we're reading by Seth Godin, Tribes, okay? Now, why do we have a book of the month? Well, we have a book of the month because every month we want every man to read. Most men today don't fucking read. My, my The man who runs the group with me, he's a great man, a successful man, and he told me, before this year, I hadn't read a book since high school. Since high school? And he's 40-something, right? So we get men to get out of their comfort zone. If you haven't read a book, read a book now. You, you, you know what I'm trying to say here, John? Yeah. Well, Right? You need that. It's being with people that makes you stronger. So if you're here... Right now, and you're listening to this, and you're a man who's like needing to be around men, and you need to reach out to me and come check out what we do. If you're a business owner who's like stuck and wanting to get past feeling stuck and going, why am I not winning? You're not winning the way I ought to be winning. I'm going to just be straight up with you and say to you something bang on. Uh, and that is because you're trying to do it by yourself. Because you're trying to do it by yourself. Or you've been around the wrong mentors and the wrong coaches and the wrong groups. Because if you're sincere and you have those four qualities that I said, decisiveness, commitment, coachability, resourcefulness, and you're not winning, you're either trying to do it by yourself or you're in the wrong group with the wrong mentor. Got to be with someone who's going to help you win. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it seems like um, me being... A solopreneur and everything it seems like i keep going into the same vicious cycle of uh learning everything again and again and again and again so it seems like uh like i'm like i'm a hamster on a wheel always running in the same spot and it keeps i keep bashing my head up against the wall like i've been trying to start up men's groups for two years now and it feels like i've been bashing my head up against the wall and the wall's starting to get a lot very deep shade of red right now look um you gotta learn watch that video that i sent you you know um go on amazon order this book you and i will have a, a conversation offline okay because th that's a deeper discussion uh but i'm gonna say this to you brother um all you need to do is say what do i need to shift that's the wrong question the questions you ask are going to determine the quality of your life 
these are some questions I have, man. I, I, I created this thing called the finish line thinking results ritual, okay? It goes like this. If you're feeling crappy, put on music that you love. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. And stand up and move your body, dance to it, you know, pump your fist, jump up and down, you know, say yes. And then ask intelligent questions. You can't ask unintelligent questions. If you ask questions that are designed to make you go into the negativity, you're going to go be down in energy. So I'm going to, I'm going to ask you some questions right now. And I want you to answer them. Okay. Okay. Let's do this. What are you happy about today? One thing. I'm having a conversation with a great guy right now. Nikki Bill you. All right. Baloo, but cool. Baloo, sorry. What are you excited oh. about today? Don't be sorry, man. Fuck. I <laughs> mispronounce all names all the time. <laughs> what am I excited about today? Oh, good question. It hasn't been much for me to be excited about for the last no 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 couple no. Weeks. What are you excited about? <clears throat> answer the question. Don't answer a question I didn't ask. It's twenty seven degrees outside and it's sunny. Fucking right. Fuck man, it's fucking four degrees outside and it's raining here. So <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Who can I make a difference for today? One person you can make a difference for today. My sister. Okay, what what can you do for her? I can be there for her if she needs me. There you go. Now, how can I attract my ideal clients today? Hmm. Hmm. Something I've been stuck on for a long time. No, no, no. Again, don't Again. answer a question I didn't ask. Okay. How can I attract my ideal client today? Uh I can go on social I can go on Facebook and start having meaning meaningful conversations with them. You can go on Facebook and post and try to get engaged somebody. That's how you can do that. Okay, great. And here's uh, the next question. How can I give my best today? By giving my 100% to the people that need it. What's that look like? Uh, if it's my parents, they have problems with their uh, with their technology, with their phone or the TV. I'm there to help them without being, you know, miserable. If it's my sister, if she needs, a, if she needs me to come along with her for a drive, I'm there for her. Okay, good. And here's a bonus question. I wonder who's the lucky son of a gun that gets to meet me today. Nikki Ballou. There you go. <laughs> so, brother, you ask dumb questions, you'll give them dumb answers. You ask good questions, you'll give good answers. Don't go to where the question isn't wanting you to go. Okay. All right. That's awesome. Got to make one of those cards. Those are those are really good questions. Yeah. Well, I got a thousand of these cards. <laughs> when you come to Toronto, I'll meet you and give you one. All right, cool. Um, so um, that's I, it, brother. That's that's the long and the short of it. That's that's the road to victory. As that's awesome. During the road to victory, we, we you touched up on this in the beginning. Um, there is adversity. Has to be. How important is failing? So this is my first book. It's called Finish Line Thinking, How to Think and Win Like a Champion. In it are 13 principles of thinking and winning like a champion. And wouldn't you know it? Principle number seven is embrace failure and fail fast. I'm going to read from the book for you, all right? Champions embrace failure. Most people are afraid to fail. They make it mean that they are a failure. 
So they seek to avoid the experience of failing at all costs. Not champions. Champions embrace failure, fail fast, learn from it, and move on. You understand? I love it. You gotta be. You gotta be into failing. You gotta be into failing. It doesn't feel great, but it's the only way to really become a major success. I absolutely. Abraham love Lincoln, it. second greatest president in American history. Some people say the greatest. Saved the Union, ended slavery, founded the Republican Party, the Party of Freedom. <laughs> um. When he first ran for office, he lost, lost a local race. He lost, uh, um, I think he was elected to Congress for one term, and then he lost. And then he ran for the Senate against Stephen Douglas, and he lost. Like he lost, 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 and then he was elected president. Hmm. Um, Elon Musk, both you and I admire. Failed, 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 failed. Started PayPal. PayPal looked like it was about to fail, fail, fail. He and his team took PayPal, sold it. He netted $100 million from it. Then he started um, Tesla. Failure after failure after failure after failure after failure. He was down to his last $10 million, and he put all of that into the business. If he lost that, he was going to be broke. Finally succeeded. And that was the richest man in the world. Every successful person goes through failure. Every human being goes through failure. Don't kid yourself. The difference between those that end up winning and those that end up losing is those that end up winning don't get stopped by it. Still don't like it. It's not fun. They don't get stopped by it. Is there a victim mentality that... Um we have to overcome because I'll, I'm going to talk from experience right now, as you and I are recording this episode, I am in Florida and I'm moving back to Toronto, not because I want to, but because I have to, I have no choice. And it does feel like a big failure, a big experiment down here in, in the sunshine state didn't work out for me. And I failed at providing for myself and for my, uh, for my family. So it feels like failure for me. So, and so I like I said, feel, you, I, you, I can, you, you, you may have to say, I failed to provide for my family, but that doesn't mean you're a failure. That's the difference. What I was going to say is that it, I was going to say that it feels, I can feel that victim mentality saying, okay, now it's time for me to go back to what was comfortable which was my IT job. And I can find an IT job in a heartbeat. It's not a problem, but I don't, it's, there's a big battle. Um, and I know there's a lot of people out there that are going through something similar, not exactly what I'm going through, but something similar to that, to, to that. So what would you say to somebody like that? I'm going to tell you what I'd say to you right now. Okay. Go get that IT job. And in fact, go get an IT job that pays you double what you've ever made before okay and have a plan get this book have a plan to get out of that it job within 12 months and that's what i'm going to tell you if you want to win look um we're going to talk offline we're going to meet i'll show you what you got to do You've been in your own head. You've been around the wrong, wrong inputs. You got to change your inputs and you got to just go, okay, I failed. Let me get up. Time to rock and roll. Let's get back on track. That's the nature of being a man, brother. You're going to go through some horrible shit. My wife left me. I slept on my mother's couch. I made no money for 13 months. Zero. Okay. I had two kids at the time. Still do. Right? Like, you think I felt like a winner then? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> right? You think I felt like, no, I didn't. Just a couple months ago, I um, I signed someone to work with us who came to into our community. 
and um, he was a snake in the grass, poison. Infected our community, cost me some business. Significant amount of money, six figures. Six figures that I could have used right now. Let mm -hmm. me be blunt, right? So I failed. I made a bad decision. I let the long person in. Am I going to stop going out there and trying to help people and trying to grow my business? No. No, I failed. I made a mistake. I learned from it. I have a new um, protocol in place to make sure that kind of thing can't happen. So it was a learning experience. Right? Learning experience. And today I get to be on this show with John Katsavos, and he and I are going to, you know, have a great conversation offline here. That's what I live for, man. Meeting men and women that are good people, meeting a man like you and going, hey, this man could use my help, but let me see if I can help him. Maybe we'll work together. Maybe we won't, but at least got good connections made. I made a difference. And when I put myself out there in the world, God brings me opportunities. I've noticed this. But if I sit and stew in it, which I did for a while, I'll be candid, it wasn't fun. During that stewing period, nothing good happens. <laughs> nothing good happens. No, nothing good happens. No, bro. No, don't stew. Can, Look, can, you gotta move forward. You gotta you gotta believe. You gotta be I... around people that'll talk you into the greatest version of yourself. One of the reasons I come on shows is because I know a lot of people are feeling messed up right now. Lockdowns in the last two plus years, inflation, you, you know, government's trying to grab our freedoms away from us. It's messed with people's uh, mental health and self-confidence and self-concept. It's a fact. Why, why do I come on the shows? Because I want people who are feeling like, oh my God, I can't win. I want to give them belief that they can win. That's why I come on shows. Build relationships with hosts like you and help the people listening to have some faith and belief and go out there and do what they need to do. Because like I told you at the beginning of the show, I believe that entrepreneurs are society's greatest heroes. And I want a, a world where there's a billion entrepreneurs that are millionaires. That's what I want. Mm -hmm. That's my job. And if I can help one person listening to the show today be inspired to take a different uh, direction, then I did my job, bro. That's awesome. And I know God will take care of me. God will take care of me. He will put people in front of me that need me and are ready to act. That's what business is. Can I push back just a little bit with what with something that you said about um, stewing? Nothing good happens while you're stewing. I agree with you. I agree that nothing good happens while you're stewing. But some of the biggest, I believe, some of the biggest aha moments, some of the biggest, um, we are going to go a little bit Christian here. Some of the biggest gifts from God happen while we're in those depths. Do you believe in that? Absolutely, they do. Of course. Absolutely. How could it be anything other than that, brother? Cool. cool. I'm just, I'm just saying that that's cool because, uh, I've had, I've had some of the biggest, I can't believe this is happening. Why me? Why me? I've actually, at, at times I've yelled at the cross kind of thing. And it's the next day, boom, some kind of different revelation happened to me. And I'm like, oh, wow, this is, this is remarkable. This is remarkable. It so, is, bro. And today, maybe the revelation for you is you get to speak with Nikki B, right? And maybe it is a revelation. revelation. Today is you got to have somebody uplift you for a while. That's maybe what it was. Yeah, that's, yeah, it is. It has been uh, like I was coming into this. I'll, I'll be honest with everybody here. Um, everybody who's been following me for the last two years knows know I'm, knows I'm transparent with my feelings and what I, what's going through. I was going through a really bad morning up here up in my head but this conversation has nikki's really helped really helped so um thank you thank you for that brother it's an honor brother it's an honor god bless you man keep doing what you're doing thank you we're coming close to the end of the show and these are the seven or eight questions i ask all my guests i just like to get your perspective of these seven or eight topics sure 
with the increase in people suffering from depression from the constant uncertainty that we've been living in through the past two and a half to three years, what would be the one thing that you could tell them to keep their hopes up? You got to believe and you got to be around people. Don't try to do it by yourself. That is a mistake. That is a mistake. Whether you're a man in a, who, who you know could use being in a men's group, maybe you're a woman who could use being in a sisterhood, or maybe you're a business owner. Business owner, uh, owning a business can be a very lonely thing. So it's important for you to have coaches, mentors, and peers that you uh, are able to bounce things off of. That's what I believe. What's the one thing that you do daily that amplifies your ability to stay focused? Work out. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> if you could pick up the phone right now and call yourself at 20 years old, what would you tell yourself? Start your business today. Don't go get a job. Looking back, would you change anything? Lots, man. But, you know... <laughs> Hindsight's twenty twenty. There's a bunch of things I'd do differently, to be sure. But hindsight's twenty twenty. You got to deal the the hand that you're dealt. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to play the hand that you're dealt, as they say. And this is the hand that I've been dealt, man. I'm fifty five years old. You know, I've been um, very blessed in many ways, and there's some goals I have that I haven't reached yet, and I'm going for it. God's given me life and energy to go for it. And I think that's part of the game of life, right? You get to, you get to uh, go out there and do what you want to do, you know. And life gives you the opportunity to do that. I mean, sometimes I go, man, I wish I already achieved all these goals. Yeah, that's a good thing to want. But part of the joy of life is having something to strive for. I think it's terrible to have nothing to strive for and be completely satisfied with everything i don't ever want to be completely satisfied amen what scares you yeah dying with my potential fully intact i want to achieve more i want to i want to do more i want to give more Good. i want to get more all of that's important to me yeah where do you see e-circle academy in the next five years i would love to have a um, hundred entrepreneurs that are part of our ongoing um, community. And I want to have helped at least half of them hit a million dollars. How about you personally? Where do you see yourself in the next five years? You know, that's a good question. I mean, I've got teenage sons, 16 and 14, so I'm I'm not going anywhere because these boys still have uh, school. <laughs> uh, my oldest son, um, he's got a dream of playing high-level soccer. He wants to go to Europe and and play. And he's a, he's a very good player, but he, he's got to do some things to, you know, continue to improve his skills and his technique. Um, I believe in him. I believe in my younger son. So it's all about being there for them. As far as uh, the things that I do, I'd like to build my business so that it's generating a certain amount of income. And um, there's a number of books uh, that I've uh, written already, but there's a, a, some books I want to publish. I want to get my first published novel out there, like pure fiction book. That's important to me. And I want to do that sooner than five years. So there we go. Cool. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where can people find more about you? Okay, Nikki Balu, N I C K Y B I L L O U. On any social media platform you can think of, should find me. Um, I've got my podcast, uh, my business podcast is called The Thought Leader Revolution. My men's podcast is called The Sovereign Man Podcast, and I've got a bunch of books I've written. So if you go to Amazon. And you type in Nikki Billu, N I C K Y B I L L O U. It'll show you all the books that I've written or co written and my two podcasts. So that's a good way. If you're a business owner and you want to have a conversation about your particular situation and really what's bothering you, why, why you're not where you want to be, I'm happy to have that conversation with you and take a look at what is it that's getting in your way 
we'll build a roadmap together to get you out of it. And I offer that co on a complimentary basis. So, you know, there's no, there's no fee for having that conversation. Um, and you can have that conversation at ecircleacademy.com forward slash appointment. Use that link. There is a bit of a screening form, just FYI at the beginning. I'm going to ask you to fill it out because this is how I know if you're a serious business person or not, because, you know, that conversation is for business people. So that's it. That's Very the cool. best way, bro. Very cool. And we will post all the links that you have given me in the, in the chat and in the questionnaire that I sent you before in the show notes. So everybody has easy access to you, your content, your, uh, your programs, everything. Love it. I appreciate you having me on the show. It was a fun conversation and I got a lot out of it. And I hope you did too. Nikki, thank you so much. Um, we went, we went left. We were supposed to go right, but we went left because it was just one of those episodes where we just had to go left. And I'm always <laughs> grateful for these conversations, but more importantly, I'm grateful for the work that you do. Um, not a lot of guys do have a, a, a community where they can get together and talk about the, the the real issues and how to solve the real issues from one guy to another. It's a huge, huge, huge problem yeah. that we're having. And for you to have a, a platform to help other men um, deal with those things, I always have a special place in my heart for guys like you and to help uh, business owners too, because it's not easy. It is not easy. And when you don't have the proper guidance, when you don't have, when you, when you have people around you constantly talking down to you, questioning you, this and that, and not support, not, not giving you the quote unquote support that you need in, in where you need to go. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard. It's very, very, it's very hard. So I, I appreciate you more than you can ever imagine for, for doing all the work that you do. I appreciate it, brother. God bless you. Uh, you're a good man. This was an excellent conversation. You really brought out a lot for me. Uh, and I really, I appreciate the opportunity to be able to share in that open, powerful way. It really makes me enjoy coming on the show. Awesome. And I am looking forward to having either a coffee or a beer with you when I come back to Toronto. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're going to do it, man. 100%. Going through hard times is just a test. What you need to know is that when you get out of whatever you're going through, you will be stronger than ever before, and you don't need to go through it alone. Always know that you are not alone. Stay tuned for more real people with amazing stories that are just like yours. Until then, until everyone out there listening, I wish you a good morning, good afternoon, or good night, wherever you may be in this crazy world. Hey, everybody. John Catalvo is from Resilient Reboot Productions. Uh, I want you guys to be able to access all the content that we're putting out with Resilient Reboot Productions, and we're moving it to a very special location. So I don't want you guys to miss out on the chance to become a uh, become part of the vibrant and supportive Resilient Reboot Productions community. Join us today and connect with like-minded individuals who are passionate about personal development, mindset, resilience, and growth. By becoming a member, You'll gain access to a wealth of valuable resources, including exclusive content, live events, and discussion forums where you can share your thoughts and insights on the latest podcast episodes. Take action now and join our community to start your journey towards a more fulfilling and resilient life.